Right, so today, in just the second episode of the season, Ed and Liz have their first argument and Liz breaks down in tears in front of her family over the upcoming wedding. So the season has just begun and already there are problems. Following their time on 90 Days The Last Resort, Big Ed and Liz moved to Arkansas and bought a house together. Thankfully, it's quite a big house because for the rest of summer, Liz's 10 year old daughter Riley will be living with them. Unsurprisingly, managing that alongside planning their wedding and juggling their finances until they can both find jobs in the local area is putting Ed and Liz under an extreme amount of pressure. For now though, it's a brand new day and as Liz and Riley begin making breakfast in the kitchen, Ed turns up to join them. We're gonna make breakfast. Okay, what are you gonna make? Breakfast pizza. Is this normal? Do people in the US actually have pizza for breakfast? Other than reheating last night's takeaway in a slobbish attempt to cure a hangover, I have never heard of this before. I was gonna make a joke about how eating like you have free healthcare is crazy, but I googled this and apparently some nutritionists think that it's better for you than cereal. Regardless, it's not the nutritional value that Ed has a problem with. You remember how to do the flour without making a mess? Yes. Okay, good. I know I'm gonna have to mop the floor when we're done. I just can feel it. And I can feel you already being a pain in the ass. So what if they're gonna make a mess? They're spending time making breakfast together. Last night they spent the evening making bracelets together. I'm sure they made a mess then too, but that's just part of having a kid. He's somewhat raised a daughter of his own. He should know what it's like. You guys are making a mess. Baby, you need to just chill. We just put the flour. I know, but you guys are such so messy. Baby, it's just a little here, bit move, right move, here. Just move. What is his deal? Why does he feel the need to barge in and make a scene by cleaning up now? They're not even done cooking. What is the point in cleaning up now if they're just gonna keep making more mess? It's so illogical that it feels like he's purposefully trying to provoke her. I know there's a lot of underlying pressure, but I can't figure out if something we didn't see last night triggered this, or if he's just being his usual douchebag self. Have you not seen yourself cook pasta? It's a little bit of flour. I don't make this big of a mess. Babe, there was no mess. You can already tell exactly where this is going, can't you? He's in a foul mood for some reason and she's biting back. This is the point where it always spirals. Liz says to the cameras in the solo interview bit that the couple's therapy in The Last Resort gave them a better roadmap to deal with each other, but it didn't solve all of their problems. And to be honest, it's hard to see any improvement at all. Look at all this right here, babe. This whole mess right here is you because you don't know how to pick up yourself after pasta. I'm not doing this. If you can't have fun, just go. Liz has a very valid point highlighting his hypocrisy with him not cleaning the mess he made the night before. But this whole you did this, you did that point scoring is supposed to be one of the worst things you can do in a relationship. And it's such a bad sign to see it rear its ugly head just two months before their wedding. She tells him to go, which he absolutely should. He should recognize when he's in this mood and they're interacting like this and just waddle away. But the big baby just cannot find it in him. What? Are you gonna smile? Are you gonna clean your mask? Or let this ruin your day? Would you stop ruining it? An older man telling a younger woman to smile will never not give me the creeps. And what's he telling her to smile for anyway? She was the one smiling first and then he came in and ruined it with all of his negativity. Also, how awkward is this with Riley in between them? They might be speaking softly and in a lower tone, but the way they're doing it is still vile. And Riley isn't a baby. She will know exactly what's going on. And in fact, to make matters worse, there's a camera crew in there with them. Can you imagine how awkward this must be? But they don't care. They're too absorbed in their ego match. Being a little brat. Clean your mask or go you're back to bed. Brat. You're gonna be a little brat. And you're pouting and you're stop. ruining the event. You stop being a brat because you're ruining it. The way he talks to her is so patronizing and condescending. He treats her like an inferior. He doesn't communicate with her like she's his partner. He belittles her like she's a child. In some ways, it's good that she's sticking up for herself, but they just bounce off each other so badly, don't they? Also, how ironic is it that he's come in here complaining about the mess, calling her a brat and telling her to smile, all the while wearing an apron with your opinion wasn't in the recipe on it? Well, tragically, with things only getting worse, poor Riley has to step in. Why don't you guys just start talking about it and we can clean up everything after we're done? That's a great idea. Seeing a kid having to act like an adult like this is actually sad. She just shouldn't be being put in this position at 10 years old. Also, it's so classic Big Ed and Liz to be fighting over something so simple that even a child can see the solution. Maybe Riley staying for the summer is going to be a net benefit to their relationship, but it's so wrong that she has to play this role. Are you ready to say you're sorry? Are you ready to clean your stove? Yes. Thank you. 
What does Ed even think that Liz should be apologising for? Making breakfast with her daughter? He can't spend all of last episode talking about how much he loves having Riley stay with them and how great of a stepfather he's gonna be, and then spend all of this one complaining about the most irrelevant consequences of it. Otherwise it makes it very clear that that was all for the cameras. Also, when Riley's gone, they're gonna look back at times like this and wish that they'd enjoyed the process, rather than bickering and getting caught up on the most irrelevant things like flour on the countertop. Well, hopefully, now that pathetic argument is behind them, the day is only up from here. Next up, with the wedding only eight weeks away, Liz's mother and grandmother are in town to celebrate 4th of July with them and go wedding dress shopping with Liz and Riley. Today I have my daughter, my mom and my grandmother wedding dress shopping and I am just so excited to be Mrs. Big Ed. <laughs> That is the first time those words have ever been said and I would put good money on that never happening again. Who the hell would be excited to be Mrs. Big Ed? On a positive note though, this will be a nice day out for them, especially after the way this morning went. In particular, it would be nice for Riley to be able to spend some time with Liz without Big Ed bearing down on them, waiting to criticise their every move. I don't want anything too flashy. Um, not ball gown, but I am getting married in a barn, so that's... <laughs> okay. Why the hell are they getting married in a barn? Is this another American thing? I'm picturing the classic big wooden building filled with hay bales, but I guess it could mean anything. Ed's family are big into property, and the ranch that they stayed at when they last visited was massive, so maybe they've got some fancy conversion set up. Anyway, as well as dress shopping, Liz wants to use this time to speak to her mum about Ed. Her family are understandably weary of her marrying him, and her mum in particular isn't a big fan of him, especially since the engagement party. I need my family to be able to see what I see in Ed, why he does make me happy. To be fair, we've been following the two of them for years now and we're still waiting to find out the answer to those questions. I'm sure they have some good times off camera, but on it, they're pretty much always fighting. They were literally doing it just a few hours ago. If I was Liz's mum and I'd seen all of that, not only would I not approve, I'd also be chasing him back to San Diego with a pitchfork. And it appears Liz's grandma isn't too thrilled either. Are you excited? Yeah, sort of. Making her happy. I am still on the fence. The grandma definitely didn't want to cause trouble, but that look says that she definitely agrees. In fact, if we're being honest, it seems like Ed and Liz are on the fence themselves. You know what's weird though? Ed is by far the worst of the two, but his mum and daughter dislike Liz so much that they've completely abandoned him. Whereas Liz's family are still willing to give Ed a chance despite everything. Well, whilst this conversation is going on, Liz is trying on a dress and eventually she comes out and thanks the two of them for driving 16 hours to be here. I'm gonna drink to that because I'm shocked that this wedding's actually happening. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> The tension is definitely growing here too, and again, poor Riley is in the middle of it all. Liz's mum and grandma go on to say that Liz's happiness is their priority, and that they see things in their relationship that they wouldn't put up with themselves. Liz's mum then tells Liz that she feels like she needs to clear the air with Ed so that they can relax, so she says that it might be a good idea to pull him for a chat at the party tomorrow. I just like when you guys talk, I don't want, I don't, I don't want you to be like too straightforward, because I give that to him enough. Why is she feeling so protective all of a sudden? After the way he's behaved, this morning included, surely she feels like he needs a good grilling from her mom. With the wedding less than eight weeks away, a good grilling could be the difference between them making it and the whole thing falling apart. I just, I'm hard enough on him enough and so is everybody else, but I just, I don't want you to be hard on him. She's saying she's really hard on him, but we don't really see much of that. I wonder if she thinks that the way she spoke to him this morning was too far, or if there are much more intense arguments that happen off camera. To be honest, there's also the very real possibility that this is the result of him gaslighting her into thinking that she's too hard on him, when really she's just calling out behaviour that deserves to be called out. He knows he's given you a reason to be upset. I just... But he doesn't know that I know the good things that he does too. Not sure what good thing she's talking about here, but she's a good mum, isn't she? She's striking a really good balance between telling Liz that she deserves to be treated better, but also allowing her to make her own decisions. She's not belittling her or ridiculing her or telling her what to do, and it seems like Liz can really be open with her about pretty much anything. Well, after wiping away her tears, Liz tries another dress on, and this time, it's exactly what she was hoping for. Oh yes. Oh, that's cute.
Liz says that she wasn't planning on buying today and that she's usually a really stingy shopper. But because the wedding's so close, she's kind of had in the back of her mind that if the right dress came along, she'd get it. And she feels like this could be it. They haven't got a great deal of money to splurge, but as long as it's not too expensive and everyone else likes it, she might just do it. It's you. It is you all the way. Right, right. I like it, but not as good as a first. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice that the conversations about Ed haven't ruined the entire day. It's a special occasion, so it's nice that she can smile and laugh after the tears were flowing. Also, Riley is such a little character, isn't she? I really don't think that she should be on the show, and I don't think Liz is doing the right thing by exposing her to all of this. But she's definitely a little beacon of light in this whole toxic mess, isn't she? Anyway, the dress ends up being just under $900, and although it's a little bit over budget, Liz decides to go for it anyway. With the dress now sorted, Liz's attention turns to the 4th of July party to tomorrow and the upcoming confrontation between her mum and Ed. They're about to be his family, his family's about to be my family, so this is a huge deal. Liz is hoping that tomorrow her family are going to get the chance to see how much she and Ed have improved, but deep down she's worried because she knows that Ed has a tendency to self-sabotage when things are going well. Buying the dress was a big commitment and she's now realising that Ed might never see her in it. Well with everything set for the party and the confrontation locked in, tomorrow is going to be a juicy one. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss it, make sure you're subscribed down below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.